First thing a guy's got to do is get this up on the Shakira stand over here. And we'll pull the valve covers off, pull the sparkulators out, even take the intake off. We're going to read on the sparkulators, check out the cylinder bores, look at the valve train. Also drain the oil, see what that tells us. And if she's got a clean bill of health, which I think it does, hopefully, then we'll get to painting on this. And I have got a hired airbrush artist on the way right now from Ohio, Iowa, Illinois. I don't know, they're all the same. It's somewhere, you know, it's down there. It's a long drive, nice of the guy to come up. So I gotta get this thing base coated right away so it's dry for him to You're gonna wanna stick around for that because this is, it's getting, you know, I'm turning it to 12. Come on, girl. Just, we just gotta do this a couple more times. This hydraulic ram is just, you know, it's tired. I think where our guy's gonna start is I'll drain the oil here. We'll strain that through some shop rags and hook our peepers into that. We're looking for excessive oil shavings. I mean, it's gonna be fairly sparkly, but that's pretty typical from the rings coming in, but we're looking for excessive metal in there and that indicates some bearing wear. We didn't lose any oil pressure. We had very consistent oil pressure from initial startup all the way to the last pole. So I'm not really too worried about it, but I wanna show you guys what's probably normal. And we might as well just go ahead and cut open that oil filter too and gander in there. What do I need? Vice grip. So this has got a magnet on it too, so we'll take a look at that right when I pull it out. And there's not a lot on there. Let's see what we get out of this. Now again, it's really typical to see some metal in here. That's that ring material, but we can see pretty easily if it's excessive, and that'll be towards the bottom of the pan here. Well, so far the oil is looking great. There's just this little amount right here on the magnet. And then usually the rest of it's caught in the very, very bottom of the filter here. So we're gonna cut that open in a minute. But yeah, this is looking good. Who put this on now? There we go. I must've got her too tight, fellers. Should be able to spin them off. Nothing to report on the paper towel, so. So far, we're looking just fine. Normally, if you're not seeing metal shavings come out of your pan, then you're good. Nothing obvious, but I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I tell you what, fellas, last couple weeks I've been so busy, haven't been able to clean up after myself like I usually try to, and it's starting to show, just getting right under my skin, worse than an Alabama skeeter. We're gonna cut this filter over. Don't stop, don't, don't get the tool, stop it. Just get a cab corner cutting tool, formerly known as a tin snips. Cut the top like this. Just get in there. And what we're gonna do is just cut this lip off all the way around. I underestimated this Wix filter. Guy had to have some words with this thing, but I got her. I get asked a lot, do I really only run Wix? And the answer is yes, absolutely, whenever possible, especially if I care about the engine. And if you want to find out why, just type Wix oil filter versus whatever you want into the Google Lighter machine and just be ready. It's gonna blow your socks off and all the way back on. And some of those guys say, well, I haven't had any problems with X oil filter. Well, by saying your engine hasn't locked up yet, isn't really proving that it's good. How you measure these is by how they filter and how they're constructed. And Wix truly is just on another level. There's a couple other brands up there with them. All right, let's take a look in here, see what we got. Hmm, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some stuff. This maybe? Nice, thick, heavy filter element here. This is the part we want to take a look at. We'll dump this out and take a look here. Yep, 
a little bit of flake, but not bad at all. I don't know if you can see that. There's just the tiniest amount of flake in there. So great news. We're safe. It's healthy. It's happy. The bearings are fine. The rings did come in. So we're off to check in the sparkulators. Let's pull these out. We'll read on them. And then we'll put the little digital camera probe thing down. Take a look at the cylinder walls. See how those are looking. Got my custom sparkulator holder XL200 out. And that'll just sit up here and I'll plop these in. That way when I get all these out, we can look at it and see if anything is different by cylinder. So far they're consistent. And I'm getting either lean, too much timing, but the correct heat range. And I mean right on the money. Well, a guy's probably one of the last fellers on the YouTubes preaching about sparkulators and the importance of reading on them. And there's good reason for it though, I promise. This is a great example. We had the digital AFR gauges hooked up on this engine and it was telling us mid 12s, which is in theory is really happy, right? But these plugs are clearly telling me we were way too lean. And not only that, but I could tell we had too much timing in it. And we know that's factual on the timing part. We ran at 37, 38, 39 degrees, and we were seeing a loss of torque of power, so we brought her down to 35. By reading your plugs here, you can really dial it in a lot closer on the front end instead of reading it on the back end. I guess if I'm gonna flap my jaw around on sparkulators, I might as well shoot you some info on it. So I'm gonna show you three things today that'll help you read your plug a little bit. And maybe that'll help you tune up your engine. Just, you know, a skosh more. That would be nice. It's an improvement. Three parts of the sparkulator here, guys gotta get familiar with. First one we're gonna talk about is a ground strap, which is this guy up here. You know, the one that you always get a screwdriver and bend up. Second one is the porcelain, the center part here. It's pretty important. The last one is the base ring. You can tell what that is because it's on the base and it's in the shape of a ring. So on this ground strap here, it's hard to see because this is a fresh plug, of course, but my color change is right here. And that's right about where I like to see them. Now you can tell your heat range by this here strap guy. If it's too far this way, it's cold. If it's too far this way, it's hot. So if you're towards the end down here is where you're changing color, that's too cold of a plug. That means the heat is dissipating too quickly like this. And what that's gonna do is create a lot of excessive carbon buildup in your combustion chamber. And that's not good. If it's too hot, the color changes way down here. What's gonna happen is this can basically act like a glow plug. And I've mentioned this before, too hot of a plug can cause dieseling, pre-ignition, pinging, all sorts of issues that everybody wants to run and blame timing and fuel, the old fuel make it happener, but all it is is a plug change. So for me, the 44 is right where I'm probably gonna leave it as far as heat range goes. So a guy's air fuel mixture actually shows up on this base ring here and it's in the shape of a ring. And you wanna see a light soot color all the way around this ring. And it's clean over here because I wiped it off because again, this is a new plug, so it's a little bit hard to see. But you do want a light soot color all the way around this ring here. And this is your jetting right here. So if you're too fat, you're gonna get heavy dry soot around here. And if you're too lean, then you're not gonna get soot all the way around. You might only have partial soot or no soot at all. Uh, and you'll just have maybe even a color change depending on the plug. So a light soot is good, but if you've got a heavy soot that you can wipe and see on your finger, you're jetted too fat there. Overall, my heat range is good. I gotta get my timing back down to 34, 35, and I need to go fatter on my fuel mixture. So now when I plug in my EFI, I know exactly where I need to be as far as target AFR. Gauges, mages. You got them right here, here, and here. That's all a guy needs. By the way, the reason that leaned up on us pretty good there towards the end was we put that one inch spacer in there. So we changed the air velocity and fuel mixture quite a bit. So when I put that Holly EFI on, we can actually set the target AFR and 
target timing and target idle, which is super cool. So I don't even have to worry about any of that stuff. You just bleep bloop it into that box apparently and it auto magically just does the thing. But throw it on the dyno, now we know exactly where we need to go. And we can skip all the test and tuning and all of that stuff, which is nice because I just, I ain't got the times for that right now. Got my cheap little hobo freight camera just jammed in here deeper than a Texas oil well. I already went all the way around and just kind of looked at the cylinder walls here. Looking for that nice cross hatch still, make sure nothing got washed down. And also any damage, heavy vertical scars and whatnot. Everything looks really good, which is great. I'm just gonna try to find how I can get this to where you guys can see what is going on here. Is this upside down? I don't know. Hey, just work in there. Stay. This is probably really tough for you guys to see, but basically we've still got the really nice cross hatch in there. You know, we don't have any scrapes or scratches vertically in the cylinder bore. So overall bill of health right now, she's looking good, but let's get the valve covers off, get the lightning whirler out, go ahead and take the intake off too glance over the valve train all that's got to come off anyway to paint this thing and then we can start prepping this Cut her down to the long block outfit again and I'm just looking for any unusual wear, broken parts, uh, any poly locks that for some crazy reason have backed off and everything is looking great. I look close at the camshaft here, make sure we got a nice wear pattern, everything looks good there. So clean bill of health, she is ready to go. Before I start prepping it for paint, one last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and Retorque all the head bolts on this since we got a good opportunity here. So I'm taking a heavy cotton rag here. And I'm just taking some earth ghost juice and just, you know, really just soak it in. Oh, that's way too much. Perfect. And then I'm just scrubbing this thing down everywhere I possibly can. The reason I'm using this one is if you use those shop towels, they just blow apart like a knee in the NFL. Block's pretty porous, you know, your sharp edges and stuff. Just don't get any of this lint inside your engine there. You know what I mean? But this will help our engine paint adhere a little bit. And I got lots of greasy fingerprints and whatnot and have yous on here. This thing's looking cleaner than my grandma's driving record. And I ain't kidding you. Is this even on? Well, I got her all cleaned up and I did go ahead and tape it off and you do that by you know putting tape on it luckily it was really clean the only leak I had was over here on the valve cover and I don't know if that's the aluminium cover sometimes they get a little warped you know and they get welded or if it was that gasket these are not the valve covers that are going to end up on the engine specifically it's the exact model but guy's got something in mind now, 50% of you are going, he's going to paint it Chevy orange. I know it. 49% of you are going, clearly it's going to be red, white, and blue. Some variation. And 1% of you are going, you paint engines? I like you. I like your style. All of you are wrong. Listen, ever since social media became a thing, Every engine is red, white, and blue. And I mean, I see 119.4 a day. Some aren't finished quite yet. And it's cool. I get it. I love it. I like the way it looks, but I like to do things my way. And I march to the beat of a different drum. And I mean, two kick drums. Boom, 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 boom. So I got something in mind. And you guys, it's, it's out there. You're just going to have to hang in there with me. And when we finish this thing up, you're gonna go, yep, blessed me. The base color on this engine is Cummings Beige, tan. And I know about 14 of you just dropped your cold snack on the ground and 
I can hear a lot of you blinking right now and it's kind of getting awkward to be honest. Just trust me, this is gonna be one of the best looking big blocks on the planet. I promise you, hard. All right, let's get to painting. I got some cans over here cooking above my Coleman propane. Gonna go with the Duplicolor, of course. Light mist, get her tacky, and then we're just gonna dig in a second coat. It's only about 40 degrees in here, so I got my paint heater 9000 just turned to high. And these are starting to come around. Oh yeah, shake these up and finish her off. I did a little test run over here. So that's gonna be the color. And again, just wait, just hang in there. Basically everything's getting color, the pan, other than the damper. We'll do the water pump and intake, same color, but I'm gonna paint them. I'll get a table out here or something. Right now I just wanna get the block nice and coated because like I said, I've got a airbrushed artist on the way. Hopefully he's still on the way. And he's gonna do some stuff. Just you wait, just hang in there now. I got one whole can in there right now. Gonna let this set up for about 20, 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna put that second can, probably another medium-ish coat on here, but it's coming around exactly how I want it to right now. I don't have the exhaust ports plugged off, but if you're not shooting straight in there, guy doesn't have to worry about that. As you can see, it's not even going in it. Just shoot down like this. Done it a million times, it'll be fine. Well, I think that's where I'm gonna shut her down for tonight. Let her dry, it's looking pretty good. Got the intake cleaned up and shot down as well. And delivery man just stopped by. This is all classic tube stuff for independence. And this is nice because this is all pre-bent specifically for that lead brake kit. So this is just plug and play. Then they sent me a nice coil of stainless and some fittings for that rear line that I got to make for that handle. So this should pretty well cover me for the brake lines. I can get this stuff plugged in before we drop the big block in, which is going to be really nice because one of those lines comes down right underneath the oil pan there on that cross member. And it's really nice to have that in before you drop the engine in. But anyway, we're going to let this dry overnight tonight and hopefully tomorrow we'll see an airbrush artist doing something. Feller's gonna be here in just a couple minutes to start doing some airbrushing so I got him set up here. Little test panel. I don't know what he's gonna need yet but he ordered this yesterday I went and picked that up for him. Apparently all that stuff makes things but what we're gonna do is basically some shadowing and I kind of want this to look like rust coming out of some of these bolt holes and things like that. So it gets kind of an age look to it. Same up here, like coming off this water neck, probably out of these plugs down around the side of the base, stuff like that. I think it'll look really cool. And I'm not gonna show you the valve covers yet. The valve covers are done. And that was done by ProArt. I actually sent those to Florida to be completed and had them shipped back. That's the last piece I'm gonna put on this thing, but he should be, you know, he's, it's, he's coming. Any minute now. So this is Jason here. He drove all the way from Illinois, actually Missouri line, I believe, which is, it's a long way. It's like 12 hours, something like that, 13 hours. I'm not sure. He's already away working on this thing. He's doing an awesome job. And I gotta tell you, it's such an awesome feeling that you guys are probably, I mean, you are. You're the best fans ever, subscribers. I reach out and say, I need help guys. and. He said, I'll do it, willing to go, let me know what you need. And he was packed and on the road in a hurry. Huge thank you to him. And he's doing an awesome job working on the intake right now. And then this is just a little bit what we're going after here on the block. And you've been painting me about 30 years, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, about 30 years. Started off in lettering and signs. And of course, obviously does airbrush as well. I wish I was this talented, but. I am clearly a nut. I'm good with hammers.
do is we want to take some of this mother nature that she's left us with. We're gonna get us some uh, some pigment, I guess we'll call it. That's the good stuff there. That's the real good, the high quality. Okay. okay. He's mixing up a special rust color with actual rust and metal and dirt and grease. This is uh, just a little bit of urethane clear. It's got a little bit of candy in it. It doesn't really matter. You can go with or without. This is just lacquer thinner. These cups, these are all very special. Uh, we're gonna just stir that around with the acid brush. Get that all good and mixed up. And then we'll go over here on our test panel and get Look at a little that. bit beautiful instant rust. Look at that. And then over here, he's dobbing out on the bolts. I just can't believe it, but I got to because I'm looking at it. I mean, who would have thought? Oh, it's just perfect. That looks beautiful. And if you go a little heavy, it's good. It's just going to run for you and do exactly what it would have done in the first place. Yep. So we just uh, let her do her thing. And come in here and just slob it around. Don't be scared, guys. Custom. Independence rust color. Well, here it is the next day dry. Got the WP on her and the intake bolted down. This thing looks absolutely amazing. I've had this idea in my head for about two or three years now, and Independence was the perfect time to do this. And I just want to thank you guys for being a part of this and allowing this to happen. And I'm glad that you guys can watch it take place. This thing is going to look just incredible when it's all done. And I hope that you guys could see it at some point, some event. At this point, I think it would make sense for me. I'm going to mock up the Pro Charger. Let's go ahead and get that set on here. I'm going to set the Holly on, kind of just mock everything in the place, test all the brackets. I just think I'm better off dry fit and everything now, including the headers and everything. That way, if I have to, I can order something before we get this put into the car. And I got 12 other projects going on. There's the headers, started painting the mirrors, but I'll get all this cleaned off. I'm gonna lay out all the Pro Charger stuff. And we're gonna kind of just loosely walk through the installation here, out here. But don't worry, because when I stick this actually into Independence, we'll go through the whole installation step by step because I've gotten a lot of questions on that. And also on the Holly EFI, we'll go step through step on that as well, how to install that. but. For right now, I just kind of want to get everything just kind of loosely mocked in here. Snowing two days ago. Now it's uh, hailing. Okay, that seems that seems fine. Everything everything's fine. So this is a lot messier than when it showed up because I've been rooting around here like a kid at Christmas probably 15 times now, but. Everything in here, guys, is labeled. I mean, it literally tells you exactly what all the hardware bags are for, what each piece is. I mean, you literally cannot mistake what all this stuff is for. There's a nice bound instruction book in here, color even, but it was just as easy for me to download the instructions right on my phone. So I have everything right here, and they make it so easy to put on. So this bracketry right here actually comes pre-assembled. So it has the tensioner pulley. Both these plates were together. All I had to do was put these spacers in, drop these three bolts in right into the head. That's on and they're just loose for now. So the next step, which I've been waiting a long time for, is to put the actual head unit on and then we get five one inch bolts right here. We'll just lightly bolt that on real quick. I noticed there's a few additional bolt holes in here. So you could probably clock this for different applications. <laughs> I could feel air just by turning this by hand. Did we just become best friends? Yeah. 
I thought so. This is where they recommend you fill her up with oil, six ounces. There's this handy little dipstick right on top, and there's a tag on the bottom that gives you instructions as well. I'm not going to do that yet until I actually mount it in the car, and I'm going to leave this tag on so I don't forget. Right now I'm actually going to put this pulley on the crank down here, and we'll get ready to put the belt on. All of the hardware is included in the kit, by the way. They couldn't have made it any easier. By the by, you can get this bracketry here and this nice matte black finish. Satin black, low gloss black, flat black. It's black, but not shiny. And then you can also get the satin finish. We got a stout eight rib belt here. And I tried putting it on the crank first, then up to the head unit, and she's a little too taunt. So what I figured is put it on the head unit first fillers, then come around the crank and she slips right on. Then they give you instructions on how to tighten the tensioner here. I feel like the teacher just got called into the hallway by the principal. You know, things are getting serious around here and I ain't kidding you. Now the air filter that was supplied with the kit. Well, that's pretty much it. Got everything kind of loosely bolted on and test fit. I also have the power steering relocation kit and that even comes with the pulley and the belt. It also comes with a uh, alternator pulley right there. And then we have all the hardware and stuff for this. This is really the only piece that I need to come up with is a piece right here. Yeah, there's just so many different variables out there with intake heights and carburetor versus EFI. And you know, that's just, it makes sense to not have that one piece. You run just a muffler store, get something bent up and bead roll the ends or flare them. And then we'll get that on pretty quick. But here's a great example of why I wanted to test fit this. On these headers, the flange is actually interfering with the ARP head bolts and that's not allowing these bolts to shoot in like they're supposed to. So I gotta take a paint marker and mark these up and then just snip them with the old flap disc so these lay in a little bit better. I wanted to show you guys the valve covers, but I can't. And it's my fault, it's not Procharger's fault at all, I didn't even check. If you've got standard valve covers or aftermarket, I've got some aftermarket ones that all fit in here works just fine, there's plenty of clearance. But I've got these extra tall ones that I bought because I wanted this flat surface and I needed them to be black because we're doing some airbrushing. And that actually hits right here. So I've already dropped them off at Andy. He's gonna do his magic and try to make a notch in here without interfering with this rocker. So you guys, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wait to see those until probably next episode. Uh, but other than those two things, everything's looking great. This is that power steering bracket. Goes on super easy right here. Just adjusts by swinging like this. Like I say, it has the belt. Pumps from CVF and so is the uh, water pump actually. And what's nice about the instructions is Pro Chargers actually tells you the part number for this pump. So it's really easy to go out and get one. I gotta pull this off and then I gotta press this pulley back on uh, so it lines up in there. And that's pretty much it for that. By the way, Pro Charger also has brackets for your charging whirler, your ice cube pumps. They have a couple different variations. And of course you can get these in intercooled as well. And in the instructions, they talk about carburetors, how to set them up, also your fuel pumps. I mean, I mean, they're very, very thorough in the instructions. But the nice thing is, I've done a lot of roots blowers installation, as you guys know. This was 394% easier to install. I mean, quite literally, it's three bolts for this bracket. You put on a pulley and a belt, and that's the bulk of it. A couple bolts here, and you're in business. I mean, it's super, super simple. So I'm gonna... Get these notched out real quick, and I'm also gonna pull this off with a gear puller and see if I can get that new one pressed on. Man, this thing is looking just incredible. By the way, these are Hooker Classic headers. They had really good reviews. 
as far as fitment in the Chevelles. And yeah, they were a little bit more money, but I tell you what, guys, I've spent, I don't know how many dollars on cheap sets that just burn off right away, or they don't fit, and you're just beating them with the old Tanya. So I kicked her up a little bit in hopes that these just slip right in. Here's a closer look of where it's hitting. Right there, there, and then I took the marker on these. So I think we just zip out just, you know, a little bit. Let's not go crazy. And then we'll try her on and see what happens. Slappage, engage. <laughs> it's completely unnecessary, dude. I just. Now, what do we got? What's it say? What are we doing here? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. What about back here? Ooh, I don't know yet. We need some more forwardage. That way. Yeah, I see, I see the problem. Mm-hmm, okay, let's do it again. By the way, this is considered a tall aftermarket's valve cover. It's chrome, but that one fits just fine on the other side. I know, even though I'm explaining this right now, there's still gonna be 178 comments of fellers saying, why didn't you just grind the bolt off? Nope. And second of all, uh -uh. and third, no. Nope. And then D, we've got $917 million in paint on this. I'm not gonna grind it off. And also, what if we gotta take the heads off, you know? Gotta have that bolt on there. So we're just gonna go this way. That fits better than my hand in a cookie jar. Just whoosh, right in there. Both headers are in, looking good. That's just saved us a ton of time fighting in the car. Now our next challenge is just hoping these clear the cross member and steering once they're in the car, but based on the oil pan, that's supposed to clear the cross member, fingers crossed, because we're way deep in that one. We should be plenty fine here, but let's move on to this little pump to get this done. That'll be nice to get this all lined up here while we can shoot our eyes down it really nice. And then we could just take this whole bracket and everything off. Once it's in the car, we could just plop that on. And then I'll probably leave this bracket on here and just take the head unit and we just take that off now. Well, I did go on ahead and get that pressed on there. I heated her up with the window defroster down here. Got it to about 1.4 Megan Foxes and then she drove right on. That uh, bare metal there is from my washer spinning. And it's really close. You can see it's just slightly off, but I'll be able to put couple washers back here and that's going to bring that right back around so i mean that's it i think right now i'm just gonna probably take the headers off the sniper the ps uh, put the lift plate on this thing so coming up next quick in a hurry and i mean hotter than an f600 clutch we're going to get that turbo 400 mounted on the big block here and we're finally going to set all of this into the independent chevelle right here and start getting this thing wired up and ready for its first start. It's about time. I don't know about you, but looking forward at it. By the way, be sure to check out the events page at vicegripgarage.com. I'm gonna try to keep that updated for you so you can see where a guy's gonna be bringing the independent Chevelle and later on this summer, the crew cab, the 777, maybe Betty White, lawsuit. I don't know, there's a lot to choose from, right? So. Swing on over there, check out the events page. Thanks guys, appreciate it very much. Until next time, keep your greasy side down.